What's up everybody? On this video, we're gonna talk about why I only drive GMC. This morning, the temperature was in the 40 degree area. Came outside and well, I mean, it's actually not that bad. It's a, it's not horrible. It's, it's kind of like, I'll do it. I mean, I don't really have a choice. I'm already here. Um, it's actually kind of pleasant to be honest. So it's not as bad as I thought it would be. And we just did some shopping at the Bass Pro Shop and at Ross where you dress for less and you'll look like less. And we're going to show Katie some stuff that I bought her now. Um, this is our this is our winter shopping video. We, we needed some winter clothes. We came from Florida. We don't really have any winter clothes, so we're trying to catch up on winter clothes. So I spent uh, something like $200 today, I think. A sweater, who's it for and what's it do? The size is 2X, so it's yours. How about that for you? That's your winter coat. It's a big 2X. Let me see. You like your new sweater? It's my parents. Yeah. Uh, you don't like it? I like it, I just don't know if it's going to work. You got one with the fur! <laughs> yeah. I like the fur. What brand is it? Uh, Colombia. Yeah. Check out your sweater. That's a real nice sweater. That's uh, not a joke. Excited? Yeah. You look like an Eskimo now. I want to be Eskimo. So, you'll be, you'll be taking the, the, the garbage out now on a, on a cold day with that. You like it? You've been, you've been taking the garbage out on cold days now. Put it on. Oh, cool. That's from the Bass Pro Shop. What'd you think? Nice little like sweater? It. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, Bass Pro Shop. Oh, and it's hoodie too. It's a hoodie, yeah. Yeah, cool. Tell me what you got. Uh, it's 3X, so we can both wear it. Yeah. The hoodie's covering a little bit. Show me what you got. There you go. That's nice. It's for me, but it's big enough to wear. You yeah. can wear it if you have to. Ready? Uh -huh. There's one more. Yeah. Ooh. And then there's we a big... We both use socks, so... Yep. And then there's a big box. Redhead boots. I'm guessing these are for you. Perhaps they are for me. Check them out. They look huge. Yeah, they're for me. But I already got one pair of boots, but I figured if they get wet or something, I'm going to need yeah. another pair of boots. I paid 50 bucks for those boots. They look good. Yeah, 50 bucks for them. So we're gonna start with the truck. 215,000 miles. That means that it's been with me for almost 100,000 miles. And it's been trouble free the whole time. Somehow the seats only have that little tear and this little tear, that's not bad at all since some of these work trucks are in horrible condition. I took out the middle seat because I wanted an armrest and I found this at Rural King and that's my new center console. Steering wheel's kind of rough. This is the second time that we have to replace the steering wheel cover and this is the shape the steering wheel is in right now at 200,000 miles. The back seats are actually in really good condition because in the back, all I keep is my work tools. So. The factory back seats are actually in really good condition since all I keep in here are tools and stuff, so I always keep it closed. And I do keep some really serious tread on these tires. Always have. Makes all types of weird noises since the day I bought it. 
you can see that's been replaced and some of these pulleys have been replaced overall not bad it did have a steering power steering fluid leak at some point and this is the lid i lost it i replaced the battery on it this part we had to change it and actually you can kind of tell how it's not factory the brakes that's been replaced i think it still has the factory radiator at 200,000 miles 215,000 miles you can't beat that But that is a beast of an engine. It's a beast of an engine. Um, I've put almost 100,000 miles on this truck and it still keeps running. So can't really beat that. I'm pretty sure it still has the factory radiator. So, I mean, I've gone through Fords and Dodges and none of them have lasted as long as this truck. This 6.0 Vortex, this engine, is the beast you can tell this is a napa part so at some point we change that but overall 200,000 miles it still has the original engine and the original transmission and that's a lot to say for a war truck because um this right here the guy that had the truck before me he ended up having uh, a boat so he would step on here he put this on here so he could hop onto the boat so he would pull right up to the boat and then use this little thing as a climbing stool. But I've been using it to store my tools. And if I'm working, I'll put a tool on there. I've also used it to climb on top of the truck. And if you're working on the truck, it's very, it's perfect. So even though it's kind of an odd thing, that's what that's about. Also, I have a trailer hitch on the front. Now, the side is really beat up and destroyed. This is one of the biggest problems with GMC trucks is the taillights. I've had a lot of Chevy trucks, and for some reason, the tail lights are always a problem. It seems like GMC can't make a light bulb. They'll make a truck that'll run 300,000 miles, but they can't make a light bulb, so. And I do have this metal cage that protects the junk in the back from breaking the rear window thing. As expected, all GMC trucks come equipped with a GMC security system which only the owner knows how to open you. On mines, I'll give you guys a secret recipe. You pull this and then you pull that. You pull this little thing. It takes two hands, I'm holding the camera, but if I wasn't holding the camera, I could pull this this way and this, this inside at the same time. And that's a, a factory security device that all GMC trucks are equipped with that only the owners know how to use. This is the best trailer hookup you're ever going to have. If you've had uh, trailer hookups that are two inch, they're garbage, these are the things to have. They're the easiest, most convenient trailer hitch you're ever gonna need, and a whole lot safer as well. Not sure why people don't use more of these, but yeah. And I've crashed into that so many times that that's kind of loose. It's got a GMC logo on the back, although it's basically not necessary since it's got the authentic, recognizable sign that lets you know it's a GMC. And the side of the truck here is a multitude of scratches and a large dent that occurred when I slid down a mountain and basically this happened. And it is a 2500 heavy duty. I also have these stepping things. They always get loose and you have to tighten them up again. Overall, this pickup truck has been the longest lasting vehicle I've ever had. I had a Mercedes Benz that I put 70,000 miles on. Me and this truck are almost at 100,000 miles. It has never left me down once. It has had repairs to some pulleys and a few other things when I drove through the water in Florida, but that wasn't the truck's fault. That was my fault for being an idiot. So overall, the truck has been great to me. All it is is a war truck. And I guess the greatest thing about this truck is how powerful it is, how well it tows. It is a complete gas hogger. That's definitely a fact. It's very reliable and those are probably the pluses. And I thought we we're gonna find some negative things to say about this truck. I guess it would be the lighting system on GMC is really bad. I never expected that I would reach this many mileage with the original engine and transmission since I'm always hauling stuff with the truck. But it's been 
very reliable and it does have a mirror that's different see that mirror right there is chrome that is because i hit a tree in florida while off-roading even though it's not a 4x4 somehow i off-road in fact you can see a little bit of dirt inside the trailer hitch that's because even though it's not an off-road truck i should have probably got a 4x4 this pickup truck has never been on top of a tow truck since i've got it now it has had to get pulled out about 20 or 30 times that's how many times i've got stuck with this truck doing things that it shouldn't be doing since it's not a 4x4 it's a very heavy truck it is a gas hogger but it has been reliable and it's a great towing vehicle i bought it for eight thousand six hundred dollars if i hadn't scratched it up i could have probably probably sold it for about the same today with these mileage because these trucks really hold their value however because i've damaged it so much and haven't done repairs and kept up on it it's pretty much just a dirty old work truck but if i had kept it in the same condition it probably would be worth the same today as when i bought it other than the damage and again if i had used it normally it wouldn't have got scratched up but i was using it for heavy duty work so it's picked up a few scratches therefore it's not worth that today it's held its value fairly well and it's been very liable that's why we ended up buying this thing so since my truck was so reliable for so many years i knew that i had to stick with the gmc brand that's why we bought this behemoth of a gas hogger if you think the truck is a gas hogger wait till you meet this guy this is a yukon xl i know you guys are going to say i paid too much i did pay out the door with taxes and tags and everything included twelve thousand dollars that includes the license plate the tags the whole deal this thing was twelve thousand dollars with tags taxes and all that so i really was like ten thousand five hundred the reason i bought it at a car dealership instead of a private party is because here in alabama people like to jack these things up and they squat them is what they, what they call it uh, there's another word for those vehicles which is an s box a poop box basically and that's the other name these things get since all the young kids buy these things and lift up i don't know why they do it but they do it anyway since they do that to these trucks they're very sought after vehicles here in alabama therefore i couldn't find a private party person that wanted a reasonable number i ended up buying it from a dealership it had hundred and ten thousand miles when i got it and we've already put about five thousand miles on it let's check it out this is a 5.7 I would have liked the 6.0 and it does have a little paint damage here again my GoPro clips this is a lot more luxurious than the truck um, as you can see I always carry my piece on me here in Alabama so right when I hop in a lot more luxurious than the pickup truck this is on so high so I don't even understand how to work this thing. It's got so much stuff going on. Basically, what I do like about this car, I love the interior colored theme going on in here. Um, it feels very professional, very clean. The information box on here. It's got 115,000 miles on it. So um, it's got a 5.7. My fuel range is 98 miles. It says 15 miles per gallon. I doubt it. You got some buttons on the steering wheel and it's a very luxurious ride. Another reason I really liked this car in particular is because the seats are not scratched or dented or beat up or neither is the steering wheel. It was really clean on the inside and a lot of these Yukons, they're, by the time you get them secondhand, they're totally destroyed. Yeah, it's dirty in here. It's not clean. We just dry this thing. We don't really fall in love with it. But anyways, all this leather, all the seats, they're not torn or anything. So that's important to me. It's a very comfortable car. Power options, power windows, power, just about everything. It's absolutely gigantic back there. Uh, we took the back seats out because we're never going to have six or eight people in here. Four people is more than enough. So you can actually fit a mattress back here. And when we travel, we actually bring a mattress with us. And if it ever snows and we lose power, we can put a mattress in here and we can actually live inside of our SUV. You can comfortably live out of this SUV. During hurricanes in Florida, we lived in cars because we were, it was too hot not to have air conditioner. So this will be a great hurricane emergency snowstorm vehicle. Uh, it's, it's really comfortable in the back. You have your own um, 
your own climate control. So if you're in the back, if you're back here, you have your own climate control in the back. So, and your own audio, I believe, I don't even know what this stuff does. I think you can listen to music back here or something. I don't know. I guess you can listen to music back here. So um, you can listen to your own music. It also has a DVD player up over overhead, um, cup holder here. You can control your own temperature. So uh, that's an awesome thing to have back here is uh, your own air conditioner. Now I don't know how to turn it off. Uh, how do I turn it off? Is it here? Uh, how do I turn this thing off? There we go. So anyways, you have your own air conditioning control. So literally, um, you can just push these, you can push these seats forward or flip them forward, fit a mattress back here and you can sleep in this car during a storm. And that's really a really main reason we got this car because it would save us money on hotels and it would also save us uh, the headache of hurricanes and stuff like that because we could just throw a mattress in here and sleep with air conditioner or heat. Same thing for a snowstorm. So uh, either way, a very convenient setup, no doubt about that. And you can tell that practically nobody was in this vehicle in the back. Uh, it's very much... Um, in really good condition in the back seat other than that stain over there but you know this it's in really good shape and again we paid ten thousand five hundred for it with you know tags insurance blah blah it came out to about twelve thousand out the door so there it is and it also has a trailer hitch uh which i'm pretty sure is compatible with what i have so um if i ever my truck ever breaks down not like it will but if it ever did this suv can be a backup for my truck so i'm never going to be out of work so this is a 5.7 the truck is a 6.0 it's a little bit smaller of an engine uh, at some point this car had an accident because you know you can just tell by this right here and that right there you can tell that at some point this car had some type of accident in the front i don't really care what i care about is this look at how clean for a hundred thousand miles this engine is i actually looked at some of these suvs that had like 80,000 miles and the engines were not this clean. You can see they take really good care of the coils, all that is new, the alternator, all of the aluminum, everything on this engine looks shiny, clean, even though it's got 115,000 miles, everything in this engine is absolutely, from the brakes to the, just everything in here looks like totally mint, well kept. I mean, whoever had this car really kept up on it. Um, and that is really important. So um, this is a vehicle right here that has been really, really been taken care of. And even though it's the 5.7, I really like the 6.0. So I don't really, really it's, it's a lot of power. I mean, it really is. And this car is in great condition. So, so I got two vehicles here on my driveway that should last me a very long time. They're very reliable vehicles. They are not good on gas, but I, I'm okay with that because I care about reliability in comfort and they're both there now the seat on my truck um i've had to put cushions and stuff underneath it because it keeps coming apart but again that's normal for a work truck overall i'm really satisfied with the gmc brand and i like these vehicles and i think i have two vehicles here that should give us transportation for a very long time and that's it guys that is why i only drive gmc's make sure you subscribe to our channel and like our videos